Chapter 3.6 The Survivor's Dilemma Do not go gentle into that good night. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Dylan Thomas, Reference 58 Chapter 3.6.1 Survival is not a birthright. It must be earned. Survival and prosperity do not appear to be birthrights. Nothing in our observations of the universe indicates that life on Earth has an inherent right to live or to keep living. This would imply that survival is an act of earning life's seat at the table by countervailing the formidable entropy of the universe. By countervailing the formidable entropy of the universe. The key to accomplishing this daunting task is for life to innovate and develop increasingly clever power projection tactics, techniques, and technologies. The power we project must be used to capture the precious, precious resources we need to survive because the universe does not appear to be inclined to part with them otherwise. The power we project must also be used to continually secure our access to those resources because predators and entropy seem to always want to take them. To innovate as quickly as possible, life's emergent behavior is to compel its organisms to keep searching for better power projection tactics under threat of predation. As birds and mammals demonstrated, the competition for better power projection tactics is daunting, but the strategy clearly works. While predators and prey compete against each other in ecological arms races, their discoveries double as a means to countervail entropy. The better organisms get at projecting power between and amongst themselves, the better life itself gets at earning its place between and amongst the stars. Nature gives us abundant supporting evidence to indicate that the more organisms battle with each other, the more they develop better power projection tactics, which help them lower their BCRA and grow their prosperity margin. On a planetary scale, this helps life vector its precious resources to its best survivors. Food, energy, and territory flow to the fittest those which prove their capacity to countervail entropy. It's as if life uses predation as a testing environment to try out and incubate different power projection tactics to in a controlled environment so that when the next meteor hits, it's better prepared. Unfortunately, nature's process of compelling life to overcome the innovator's dilemma seems to have led to yet another dilemma one that has driven sapiens to the brink of self-destruction via nuclear annihilation. More on this in the next chapter. The author calls this dilemma the survivor's dilemma. Chapter 3.6.2 Organisms have no way of knowing how secure is secure enough, creating a survivor's dilemma. As previously discussed, Organisms must ensure their BCRA levels stay below the environment's hazardous BCRA level to per survive and prosper. Every local environment has a BCRA level which qualifies as hazardous, serving as a threshold where an organism is virtually guaranteed to be attacked. This level changes dependent on the environment and organisms can increase their chance of survival if they adjust their own BCRA so that it stays below the environment's hazardous BCRA level. The farther an organism's BCRA level is below the hazardous BCRA level, the better. These dynamics are illustrated in Figure 16. The margin between the organism's BCRA level and the environment's hazardous BCRA level, i.e. the BCRA level at which an organism is likely to be attacked within a given predatory environment, is the organism's prosperity margin. An organism is safe to increase BCRA within the prosperity margin without reaching a hazardous state.
Keeping one's BCRA below the hazardous BCRA level seems straightforward, but it's challenging because organisms don't know what the hazardous BCRA level is. That level is a moving target. It changes dependent on conditions outside of what organisms can see or control. They can only guess how far they can afford to raise their BCRA before they put themselves in a hazardous state. To make matters even more complicated, the hazardous BCRA level tends to drop as environment as the environment becomes increasingly more predatory and CCCH. And the rate at which it drops is also unknown. This means organisms don't know how much prosperity margin they have, nor how quickly it's shrinking. 3.6.3 Organisms have three options for solving the survivor's dilemma. I don't have to outrun the bear. I just have to outrun you. Proverb, origin unknown. This lack of critical information creates a dilemma for organisms seeking to survive and grow in a CCCH environment. The author calls this dilemma the survivor's dilemma. The dilemma happens because the growing resource abundance causes an organism's BA to increase, which in turn causes its BCRA to increase. In response to this challenge, organisms have three strategic options. If an organism does nothing to counterbalance the effect of increase in BA, then its BCRA will climb and its prosperity margin will shrink. We can call this option one. If an organism perfectly counterbalances the effect of increasing BA with an equivalent amount of CA, then its BCRA will stay fixed, but its prosperity margin will still shrink because the increasingly CCH nature of the environment naturally causes the environment's hazardous BCRA level to fall we can call this option two. The last remaining option for an organism seeking resource abundance growth is to counterbalance the effort of its growing BA with a greater amount of CA to ensure its BCRA continuously shrinks. We can call this option three. Note how even option three doesn't necessarily prevent prosperity margin from shrinking. The organism must execute option three in such a way that the organism's BCRA falls faster than the rate at which the environment's hazardous BCRA level falls to prevent prosperity margin from shrinking. Survival is therefore much like the proverb about outrunning the bear, where the bear is the local environment's hazardous BCRA level and it's completely invisible to the organisms trying to outrun it. Fortunately, one does not need to outrun the invisible bear. They just need to outrun their neighbors who are also trying to outrun the invisible bear. In this scenario, it's clear that option three is the most strategically optimal because it's the only option which actually runs away from the direction of the invisible bear. Option two stands still and option one runs towards the invisible bear. Seems pretty clear cut to me. <clears throat> it seems straightforward, but option three is deceptively deceptively difficult because organisms don't know how much CA they need to survive. The organism needs to grow enough CA to ensure its BCA drops quicker than the hazardous BCRA level, but the organism knows practically nothing about that level. It doesn't know what le level qualifies as hazardous, nor the rate at which that level is fallen as the environment becomes more CCCH. The organism's prosperity margin could even drop to zero while it executes option three, simply because it isn't aggressive enough. The reader is now invited to place themselves in the shoes of an organism faced with the task of survival. You are technically already in those shoes, whether you accept that or not. <laughs> yeah, we are. You have a power projection budget of X watts. What you do with what do you do with those watts? Do you put those X watts towards growing resource abundance, thus increasing BA, or towards growing your ability to impose severe physical costs on your murderous fratricidal neighbors, thus increasing CA? The precious amount of BA or CA you need to grow is impossible for you to know because it depends on factors outside of what you can see and control. Factors like what hungry, envious neighbors are choosing to do with their watts. Chapter 3.6.4. The strategic shilling point is to continuously decrease the benefit to cost ratio of attack. The survivor's dilemma creates a game theoretic situation 
where you can't trust your neighbor, you don't know what BCRA level qualifies as hazardous, and you don't know how quickly the hazardous BCRA level is chasing you. This means you don't know how much prosperity margin you have or how quickly it's dwindling. You know you should try to outrun your neighbors from the invisible bear, but you don't know how quickly you need to run because you can't see the invisible bear. In this situation, the optimal strategy is to simply run as fast as you can afford to run, to invest your watts in keeping your BCRA from falling as quickly as you can afford for it to fall. This will minimize the probability of causing your prosperity margin, i.e. the distance between you and the invisible bear, to, cl to close while still giving you the opportunity to grow your resource abundance. It's like two pedal driving where CA is the throttle pedal and BA is the brake pedal. To survive, you have to keep a heavy foot on the CA pedal at the same time you press the BA pedal to outrun the neighbors. And you have to constantly manage this. The survivor's dilemma represents the same fundamental challenge as national strategic security. There's no way to know how much security is enough security. A nation can only guess how much security they need based on the intelligence they can collect about their opponent's power projection capabilities. But the only way for a nation to know for sure that they haven't dedicated enough resource towards security is the hard way. This is the same dilemma that all organisms face. No matter what kind of organism they are and no matter what they think about primordial economics. The organisms which survive are the ones that adopt the shilling point of lowering BCRA as consistently and as affordable to as possible. In other words, the organisms as, which survive are the ones who learn to continuously maximize their capacity and inclination to impose severe physical costs on their neighbors. In this environment, a significant premium is placed on dual use power projection tactics, techniques, and technologies. Tactics which only serve to increase BA are strategically compromising. It's more favorable to develop power projection tactics that allow an organism to spend their watts capturing resources and impose physical cost on neighbors to ensure one's BCRA level continues to fall as quickly as possible. Unfortunately, when multiple organisms adopt the same shilling point, it makes the local environment more CCH because everyone dedicates a disproportionate number of their watts towards finding increasingly more clever ways to impose severe physical costs on each other. This, these dynamics cause the hazardous BCRA to fall even faster, making the invisible bear pick up more speed. Chapter 3.6.5 The Survivor's Dilemma explains why nature's top survivors are often powerful and mean. The emergent effect of these dynamics explains why wild animals look and act the way they do. Ever notice how nature's survivors at the top of the food chain look so consistently tough? The Survivor's Dilemma offers an explanation. Top performing organisms are pressing the CA pedal harder than the BA pedal. They focus on making sure they stay well equipped with all the latest and greatest dual use power projection tactics that enable them to grow BA and grow CA simultaneously with heavier emphasis on growing CA. Their teeth are sharpened. Their nails are sharpened. Why? To impose severe physical costs on their neighbors by puncturing them. Life's top survivors are frequently covered in equipment, which empowers them to pinch, puncture, and bludgeon. They often have thick suits of armor backed by rigid skeletons, often with big muscles hanging from those skeletons. They're what some people might call scary or aggressive or repugnant due to their capacity and inclination to impose severe physical costs on their neighbors. Have you ever stopped to consider why top performers in nature look the way they do? Why aren't nature's top performers consistently fat, soft, and docile? Once we understand primordial economic game theory, it makes perfect sense why Earth's top performers keep converging on the same characteristics despite being separated by vast quantities of time and distance. We can't allow ourselves to overlook the fact that what we observe in nature is incontrovertibly what survives in nature. 
We can't allow ourselves to overlook the fact that what we observe in nature is incontrovertibly what survives in nature. The fact that life's top survivors keep converging on the same lean, mean, fighting machines is probably not a coincidence. To believe otherwise is to be guilty of survivorship bias. More on this later. Nature is clearly telling us something. It seems to be telling us that emphasis on CA matters, and it matters quite a lot. It tells us that organisms who burn watts to increase CA are organisms which survive. It tells us that if we want to prosper and grow, we need to become sharper both physically and intellectually.